Hey guys, welcome back to the Magpet Ranch Paintball Channel, and today I'm going to be doing another Final Inspect Fridays. But before we get into it guys, please subscribe to the channel, right? Smash that like button, turn on the notification bell. I am always trying to post Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays guys, but it's been crazy busy, so I apologize I haven't posted a new video in a couple weeks. But moving forward, I am going to try to continue uh, posting videos more consistent. Okay, anyways. Guys, also watch the whole video and of course share and comment at the end. Guys, I think sharing uh, as much information as we can uh, in the MagPay community, I think is, is, I think one of the things we should be pushing for, you know, this year, the rest of the year, and of course, uh, you know, moving forward because there's just really a lack of information out there when it comes to MagFed, you know, specifically with first strike rounds. Uh, and I think any information, whether that might, you know, be uh, specific to a certain setup or even just specific to a certain marker or whatever, all this data is going to be helpful for the community moving forward, uh, especially as we want to see this sport continue to grow and grow. Okay. And plus, of course, guys, I always love your guys' questions and comments. I try to answer all of them as best as I can. Uh, and yeah, I love communicating uh, with you guys out there. Uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, okay? Uh, guys, go check out our library, right? We uh, we have quite a bit, uh, a big library. I think it's, we're at 150 videos currently, but guys, please go check it out. A lot of useful information uh, for MagPed uh, and, you know, some, some pretty good guidelines in terms of uh, for newbies coming out there looking to play. Okay, guys, hey, so today's topic uh, for Final Inspect Fridays is I'm gonna be walking you guys on how to set up a red dot on your MagFed marker. Okay guys, and this isn't uh, specific to any particular platform, although I will, you know, like I said, preface a couple things. One, as you guys know on this channel, we focus specifically on first strike capable markers. And so that's gonna be your T15s, the M17s, right? Uh, those are the two platforms that we specialize in uh, and we like because we, you know, we build clone markers out of them. But this will work with, of course, the EMF 100. Uh, this will work on the SARS. Uh, you know, if you want to use a red dot, I personally think a scope, uh, a magnified scope, would be really better for that platform. Uh, you know, the 468. You know, any any FSR capable marker out there, the TGR. Uh, this is relevant, or you can use it uh, uh, for those markers. Okay, and that's. Before I get into it, uh, let's talk about is a red dot useful on a round ball setup? And you guys know I don't talk much about round ball, but you know, is it even useful on a round ball setup? Um, and I think, I personally think it is. Uh, when we were playing, uh, we would zero our markers for round ball. And guys, I think I get it. There's a lot of paintball players out there that say, you know, learn how to snap shoot, right? Learn how to just kind of point shoot. Um, and you can definitely get some effective, uh, you know, eliminations that way. But I think at a certain distance, you know, with round ball, that's probably going to be max out to 20 yards, 25 yards in terms of kind of guaranteeing a zero with the round ball. I think, you know, obviously close range, snap shooting, no problem. I think that's definitely a way to go. But when you start getting a little bit maybe further out, the limitations of round ball, 25, 30 yards, obviously 40, 50 yards, uh, a zero to me is kind of useless with round ball because the accuracy is going to be so far off that you're, you're really not going to get, uh, you know, a consistent hit. But at 20 to 25 yards and in, I think a red dot setup can be useful. Okay, let's talk about FSR because that's what it's really about, right guys? So what we're trying to achieve, right? Let's talk about what our goal is with a red dot setup. We're trying to obviously achieve faster, more efficient and accurate hits with an optic, right? Once again, hey, a lot of point shooters, snap shooters out there will say that that's all you need. But guys, when you start increasing the further distances, when you start talking about maybe having to shoot through 
uh, you know, a, maybe a smaller window, a, a smaller target is, you know, maybe a part of the, the target is uh, less exposed and you need an accurate hit like an FSR is capable of. Uh, this is kind of where an optic is going to come into useful play. And then also it's going to save you money as well too, right? Being able to eliminate a target with less shots will save you money in the long run with FSR, correct? And then of course, it's gonna save time. You know, less shots to eliminate the target, less time to eliminate the targets. You know, so it's just overall a better performing setup uh, for your you know, for your markers, okay? Um, the first thing we need to discuss when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about uh, 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 MagFed uh, markers though, is we need to discuss the, the rise of the red dot on the marker itself, okay? And what I mean by that, guys, I've talked about this extensively in other videos, so go check out those videos, guys, but the problem with our MagFed markers uh, is we have to wear goggles when we play. And so if you don't have a, uh, enough of a rise above, right, the, 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 the bore, right, above the receiver, wearing goggles won't allow you to see the dot, won't allow you to see the reticle, okay, of the optic. And so in our testing, in our, uh, our obviously all our, our testing and shooting, we've seen that, you know, you need uh, roughly a minimum of two and a half inches, okay, and that's, the distance above the receiver of the marker and where the center of the dot of the optic would be, right? So if you measure this distance, right, from here to here, it's about two and a half inches, okay? And so I have a couple of setups here that gets, that kind of gets you to achieve that. The first one, of course, is you can kind of use a combination of a drop-down ASA as I have here with the first strike drop-down ASA. And of course, there's some type of riser, adjustable riser that you can get on Amazon or online. And what you want to do is, like I said, with the combination of these two distances, you're getting that two and a half inch from here to here, okay? And the reason for that, guys, is like I was saying, if you're wearing goggles and your cheek weld uh, is gonna be pushed up a little bit higher, you want uh, either the tank to drop down and have a little bit of a rise on your optic Okay, so that way you can achieve that distance to get uh, the right, correct sight picture, okay? The second option, of course, is kind of cool, is that you can actually kind of just use your standard carrying handle and achieve that correct distance, okay? Now, if, if you want to talk about just the distance needed for the riser or the drop down, that distance is minimally two inches. Okay, so you're looking at, you know, in terms of your riser setup, you want that distance to be at least two inches. And then of course that optic, right, the optic itself will add that extra half inch that you're looking for. Okay, so it's really kind of cool. This retro setup that I have here, a two, uh, uh, the carry handle setup will work. And lastly, I have is that the setup kind of that we prefer, which is using some type of adjustable riser. We, we specifically like and use the first strike adjustable riser, um, but it gives you uh, actually a little bit more of a rise. It's typically around three to three and a half inches, depending on the mount that you can use for your optic. But for us, uh, three and three and a half inches is uh, more ideal because uh, you really can have an upright position with the goggles instead of having to slightly kink your neck over. And so it's just a better, more natural, comfortable position uh, to shoot your marker. The other benefit, of course, and which we'll get into more later, is that the adjustable riser will allow you the different settings, right, to be able to hit targets at further distances uh, when you start stretching out the first strike capability, right, from you know, 60, 80, you know, all the way out to 150, 120 yards. Now, let's segue to that, right? Let's talk about distance real quick, right? What is kind of the ideal distance setup, you know, mission objective, uh, whatever you want to call it, right? 
for a red dot setup. Us personally, right, this, there's no strict rule. You can definitely shoot a red dot, right? We shoot real firearms all the time, way past 150 yards with red dots, right? But for us, for paintball, uh, we, we personally think a, you know, max range of like 90 yards and in would be an ideal setup for a red dot, okay? Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. I think at the further distances, you can kind of see where the first strike round is uh, hitting or, 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 or flying. Uh, with a magnified optic versus a red dot and that definitely helps with you know kind of uh, zeroing in kind of which uh, kind of like I guess you know kind of like just shooting and aiming in your target at the longer distances and so for us you know a, a, a closer range of engagement is more ideal for a red dot set but of course you can definitely shoot uh, further than that using a red dot setup um, the other reason for that is that you're going to need to make more adjustments with the red dot versus a, like a crossbow scope or the supremacy scope from uh, Karma Tech, right? Uh, and well, let's get into that next, okay, is, is the adjustments that you will need. Okay, so typically when you go to zero any optic, uh, but we're talking about red dots now, your zero is typically you want to have a 20 yard zero. Okay, the reason for that is that we found that through all our testing that typically the iron sights that come with your markers or if you install uh, backup iron sights, uh, we get it, they're not useful in an actual game. But when you go to zero your iron sights, usually that zero distance is 20 yards. It pretty much is the majority of the time, 20 yards, okay? And so zeroing your red dot at that distance is useful as well too because um, the 20 yard zero is equivalent to pretty much like a 100 yard zero for a real firearm. And, and what we mean by that is that you can kind of expect a specific MOA rating at the 20 yard uh, distance. And then as you increase you know, to the further distances, that MOA kind of stays consistent. So, you know, for example, a really dialed in mag fed setup at 20 yards will probably shoot two inch groups at 20 yards. And then when you go to 40 yards, it'll shoot roughly a four inch to five inch group. And then when you go to 60 yards, it's going to shoot about a six to eight inch group. And then when you go to 80 yards, it'll shoot about a eight to 10 inch group, okay? With, like I said, with a dialed in setup with match grade round. And so the 20 yard zero is kind of like a good standardized baseline zero to achieve kind of like this MOA standard for the rest of the distances, okay? And so where the riser, an adjustable riser, like the first strike uh, adjustable riser comes into play is that you can, you know, set the adjustments for the different distances. And once you've zeroed your optic at 20 yards, and I'll go over the zero here in a second, guys. Uh, once you zero your optic at 20 yards, you can then use the adjustable click settings here, right, tilt settings, to achieve the different holds for the different distances. And Guys, every setup is different, but this is kind of where you want to kind of do kind of like your data collection, right? Almost kind of like how snipers will have a journal uh, of what their different holds are with different winds and different, you know, distances, right? And so, for example, I have some, some data here that we've collected over the years with our shooting. And it says, with a 10-inch barrel, which... These markers are here, guys. This one's 10 inches, this one's 10 inches. They just have a, a mock suppressor on them. A 40 yard hold is two clicks on the adjustable riser, okay? So if you, you know, set it here at normal, then two clicks down is 40 yards. As you'll notice, hey, 40 yards is not that much 
of a hole, right? It's, it's not that tilting of the marker. At 50 yards, it's three clicks, okay? So it's three clicks down. At uh, 60 yards, it's four clicks. At 70 yards, it's five clicks. And then at 80 yards, it's eight clicks. Okay, guys, and these are just guidelines um, in our testing that we found that maybe sometimes there's a plus or minus one uh, click setting depending on your marker and your red dot or your holographic site, right? But in general, that that's kind of the, the settings. And so what's cool about the FSR adjustable riser is that you can kind of label the different holds here on the dial, right? And so then you can know automatically when you're going out there and playing, and you say, okay, shoot, this target looks like it's at about 40 or 50 yards. I'm gonna click it down four or five times, and then I'm gonna go take my shot, right? And I should be close, or like I said, if you really are experienced and familiar with your marker, those holes should be pretty spot on. Now, the problem with the red dot versus a crossbow scope, and I'll get that to you with another video uh, when we do our crossbows, is that unfortunately, this takes time, right? On a crossbow scope, Karma Tech scope, all you really have to do is use the different reticle holes on the, on the optic to achieve those holes versus having to dial in the clips. Okay, so there, there in last kind of the cool pros and cons. All right, let's talk about zeroing the marker real quick. So how do we go about zeroing the marker? Well, first things first, uh, and not in any particular order, right? But what type of rounds are you planning to use to start out to zero your marker? Are you just using just the general batch of first strikes right out of a package of, you know, of whatever purchase you buy, 150 pack, uh, you know, uh, different size packs, right? So are you just gonna just use the rounds that just come out of a pack and not, you know, not match grade them? If you do that, then of course you just have to realize that your zero is, might be a little bit off, right? Because the rounds are not the same and they might have less accuracy even at a 20 yard zero. So that's the first thing to consider. And then if you are gonna use match grade rounds, then what match grade round are you going to use? This is gonna be very similar to, you know, to real firearms, guys. Like, you know, with the ARs, you know, are you gonna use 55 grain, 62 grain, 77 grain, right? Which, which round are you going to use to zero your marker at? Okay, and if you're using different things, different match grade rounds, then you just have to realize that that's what your marker is zeroed at, at okay? So that's first. Second is going to be, what do you want to zero your marker at? And like we were saying, you know, we suggest a 20 yard zero, guys. We've, we've just seen that that seems to be the easiest. Right, as you guys can see with the adjustable riser clicks, it's pretty one-to-one, -one, right? 60 yards is six clicks, 70 yards, you know, like it's, it's pretty much like it goes, right? Two clicks at 40 yards, three clicks at 30 yards, and you know, 50 yards, I'm sorry, and so forth and so forth. So it seems pretty straightforward. But depending on your guys' testing, maybe you will zero it at 40 yards, maybe you'll zero it at 10 yards, right? That's gonna be up to you and your setup and then you're gonna to have to determine the different holds with it. Okay, so let's, let's get into how we wanna zero our marker. So first things first is you want to have a stable platform. You know, this, I just thought about this now, but you know, even this airsoft stand could be a good uh, setup, right? To keep it steady and zero, although, you know, there's a little bit of play. But ideally what you wanna use is either sandbags or like a lead sled, right? Like a real firearm sled. Uh, we just use sandbags on ours, guys, because we think the sled's a little overkill. Uh, you can always use a uh, bipod as well, too, setup. If you have, you know, Picatinny that you can mount a bipod on, and then you can get a stable platform with that, you can use that as well. But in essence, you just want something that's going to be stable and consistent. And uh, when you go to mount your optic, on your, your, you know, whether that's the AR handle or, uh, you know, the adjustable riser, you know, you just want to make sure that it's mounted properly. Now, a lot of the red dots come with their own mounts, like this Beerus 
uh, TR, uh, I think this is the TRS-25, uh, Bushnell, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is the Bushnell TRS-25, uh, or like this Sightmark uh, red dot scope uh, optic that we have here. But in essence, those will come with their own mount, so you really don't have to worry about the, uh, the balance of it, right? The level, the levelness of it. But on this Bushnell, for example, here, um, uh, Beerus, I'm sorry, that we have here, you see that I had to use a uh, ring mount to get it mounted onto the carry handle. So you just wanna make sure that it's leveled, fairly leveled, so, so that way it's gonna be accurate. Uh, and then of course you just want to go and tighten all the mounting screws and everything properly so that way it's tight and it's not loose, right? Because if you have a loose optic, it's going to be inconsistent from shot to shot. And so you're going to think that your zero is just funky or there's something wrong with your marker, but you're going to have to make sure that that's tight. The other thing you have to be careful too is like on certain markers, I've talked about this, I got the T15. Um, you know, if you don't go and tight the barrel down properly, then you're going to have barrel wobble. In essence, you just want to make sure your optic and your marker is assembled properly, tight, and not going to come loose, which is going to affect your zero if that happens. Okay? So get a stable platform. And what you're going to want to do is, you know, with a decent target, right, a very high visible target out there, uh, and you can use paper targets, guys, right? Uh, so that way you can see where it hits. Uh, or you can use the plastic targets that you've seen that we've used on our videos. But in essence, you want something visible. And so you're just gonna aim it center bullseye of the target, right? And put that red dot right on the center of bullseye. You're gonna go squeeze off that first round and then see where it hits, okay? After you do that, so let's say I go do that and I zero, you know, right, right, right in the center of the bullseye and it hits uh, left and uh, to the left of the bullseye and high, right? So obviously the windage and the elevation is off. The next thing you, so the next step is you don't want to change anything, right? You don't want to change in terms of your, your marker position, I mean. You literally want to uh, aim down the red dot, right, center bullseye still. And then what you want to do is use your elevation and windage adjustments on your uh, optic and adjust the red dot to the point of impact that you just hit on the first shot, right? So if that impact on the target was left and up, right, you literally move the red dot, right, which you're aiming here in the center, right? You look down the red dot and then you literally adjust the red dot until the red dot, if this is the point of impact and the red dot here is center bullseye, you literally just adjust the red dot until that red dot is on the place that you hit earlier, okay? Now once you do that, you're gonna go aim for the center of the bullseye again and you're gonna squeeze off another shot. Now if you did everything correctly, right, if you adjusted it from the second step, the next shot should be very close to the bullseye, right? It should have moved down a little bit because you adjusted the elevation, and it should have moved right a little bit because you adjusted the windage. So let's say you did it, and now it's just slightly high, and it's just slightly to the left. Well, then same thing, right? You keep your marker aimed at the bullseye, the red dot aimed at the bullseye again, and then you go and adjust Right, so now let's say the point of impact's here, the bullseye's here, and then now you make the small adjustment just a little bit to the uh, left and up, right, until that red dot is on the second point of impact, and then you go again. And as you guys keep doing that, as you keep doing it, that point of impact should continue getting closer and closer to the bullseye. If you do everything correctly, you should have it after the second, third, or fourth adjustment of that, right? Because after that first adjustment, the gross adjustment, you should be fairly close. After that second adjustment, you should be really, really close, if not there already. And then that third adjustment uh, should be there. Now, the problem, guys, of course, as we know, first strike rounds are not real bullets, right? So they're not going to be perfectly hitting 
this target in the exact spot as accurate as a real bullet is going to hit. But like I was telling you guys, with match grade, excuse me, with match grade ammo at 20 yards, you should get roughly a two inch grouping. And that's the reason why we recommend a 20 yard uh, zero as well, guys, because think about it. If you start stretching the zero out to 30 yards, 40 yards or 50 yards, that group can be five to six inches. So, you know, how are you going to zero your marker when, you know, the point of impact is constantly shifting within this five or six inch group, right? And so us personally, we would recommend that you stick with a 20 yard or in zero. You know, 10 yards is kind of our second go to zero distance if you really wanted to use a different distance than 20 yards. But I think 20 yards is the ideal uh, ideal distance. Okay, so that's how you would go to adjust your zero. And once again, just realize that you're using that specific uh, match grade FSR to achieve that zero. Now, if you guys are not going to match grade your FSR or use, you know, use somebody or ours, for example, match grade rounds, you just have to realize that that group uh, at 20 yards might be like four inches, four or five inches sometimes at the high side. So it's like, you know, in essence, a four or five MOA at, at 20 yards. So same thing as trying to zero at 40 or 50 yards with match grade ammo, it's gonna be kind of hard to get that, that zero at 20 yards if you're not using match grade uh, quality FSR. Okay, so just be aware of that. If you're gonna just use maybe just straight out of the box FSR, we probably recommend using a 10 yard zero instead of a 20 yard zero. Okay guys? And so yeah, same thing with the other setup guys, you know, whether that's, you know, like a holographic sight guys. I know the sight market looks like a holographic sight, but it's actually a red dot. But you know, if you're actually gonna be using a real EOTech, it's gonna be the same thing, right? On the EOTech or even on the sight market has kind of like this, um, 6 MOA or 8 MOA ring and then it has like a 2 MOA dot in the center What you're going to want to use is of course that 2 MOA uh, dot to zero uh, Your marker in at 20 yards and then you know each optic has its own different set of adjustments Speaking about the adjustments real quick guys uh, uh, For those that haven't done it before pretty much the elevation or windage adjustments will show a direction so for example, on, you'll see on this sight mark, uh, the windage adjustment on the side of the optic here, it'll say an R, you'll see the letter R. And that literally means that you're adjusting it to the right. When you, so when you, you know, when you turn that adjustment that direction, you will literally see the, the reticle move that direction, right? So if it says right, it's moving to the right. Uh, obviously the opposite direction will be to the left. And on this one, it has a uh, sign, you know, showing up. So obviously if you turn that direction, the, the reticle will move up. And of course the other direction, the reticle will move down. Okay guys. And so guys, that's how you want to zero your red dot, uh, right? That's gonna how you're gonna want to set up your red dot. Like I said, you gotta make sure that it has the correct rise above the receiver to be able to look it through uh, with goggles. You wanna make sure your zero is proper. And like I said, there's a few uh, keys you wanna make note. You need to use match grade ammo uh, unless you're planning to use a shorter distance zero. Uh, otherwise, like I said, the zero can be kind of not as consistent. And of course, uh, if you don't uh, use an adjustable riser, uh, real quick on that topic, if you don't use an adjustable riser with your red dot and you're just going to use a carry handle or a drop down, you know, uh, drop down and riser combination, you have to remember at the further distances like 60 or 80 yards, you're not going to get a very clear sight picture of the target because in essence, you're literally having to hold over, right? You're literally having to hold the dot over your target and just and hoping that your holdover is accurate uh, enough to hit that uh, distance, right? Hit that target at that certain distance. Um, 
at 40 to 60 yards, that might not be that big of an issue because you can just say, okay, hey, I'm just gonna hold a few inches above the target. But as you stretch out to the further distances, it's gonna get even more difficult because your target won't even be in the tube, right? It won't even be in your sight picture. And so then you're really guessing at that point. So once again, this kind of goes back to our earlier recommendation on why we say a red dot is not useful at the really long distances without an adjustable riser uh, because, like I said, the holdovers, it's not a real farm, right? Like with a real farm, you could shoot 400, 500 yards and your target's still in your sight picture. Yes, you might have to hold a little bit higher, but it's not so high, right? That you can't see your target in your, in your reticle, in your optic. But with, unfortunately, paintball with first strike rounds, that distance, you know, that, that distance isn't the same. So you're gonna lose your target in your sight picture. And so without an adjustable riser, uh, it's not really an ideal setup for the really longer distances. Okay guys, hey, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video, but that's how you wanna set up your red dot on your MagPad marker uh, using first strike rounds specifically. Guys, hey, if you guys like the video, please smash, you know, smash that like button, give us a big thumbs up, share, comment. Love you guys. Check you guys next time. Peace.